14 days to make an Infinity Castle animation. No worries, it just took an amazing anime studio three and a half years to make. This is the reference that I'm using. It's the end sequence from the Infinity Castle movie that just came out. It's gonna be crazy. To pull it off, I'm going to break it up into three pieces, the room, the tower, and the cube. But I start with a storyboard, just like before any good animation, there's almost always a storyboard. I start off my storyboards with a rough pass so that I can come back in and finalize the details as I go, trying to stick as close as I can to the reference, um, but adding my own flair. And then of course in the final I come back and add all the in-between frames. The room, part one. We'll start with just a little lantern. I thought this was a really cool idea because we could do sort of like a loop at the end with a cube. This is the reference that I used. I didn't stick fully to it, um, but I did model it using the random select tool and then just deleted the faces and inset. From there, I wanted to create moves on and I made that super easily with the human gen add-on. This is the reference that I use for Muzon. He's really nicely dressed and has this interesting hat that he's always wearing, so I thought that was super important to uh, make sure that we get in our character as well. Then he's got these crazy demon eyes too, so I thought that was really important to make sure that we have in the animation, and it's really easy to just replace it with uh, assets from Blender Kit. Unfortunately, I was really dreading having to animate the character because it would take up a ton of time and I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to do it. But then I remembered that Rococo has this amazing Blender add-on and the way in which I used that with Human Gen was from Blender, I exported the Human Gen as an OBJ, then uploaded that to Mixamo. Then from the Mixamo animation, I brought that back into Blender. Using the Rococo add-on, it made it super simple to uh, just set the bones and put everything together for retargeting. And then boom, this add-on genuinely helped making this like whole animation so much smoother. And now I'm finally moving on to the room itself, which I was really excited for because I had this cool kit from Sketchfab and I just love putting around kits and making environments this way. Thank you, Exervolt, for making that for free. Hopefully this credit is good enough for you. <laughs> From there, uh, we have part one already set up. So this probably took me the longest for trying to reconstruct this tower. I had three different ideas that I wanted to go off of. The first was cube, which is like a procedural geometry node setup, a uh, constructed castle, which was totally modeled by me using a Japanese temple. And then I was gonna try some stacks as well, which is another geo node setup and ultimately took a ton of time. At first, I thought it was going to be super cool to do like this really cool cube procedural animation, and it worked out for the most part. But after modeling the rooms, the stacks, and the procedural environment, I was really not sure if I wanted to go this route because all things worked, they also didn't. And so I decided. to go with a much simpler idea and go, again go back to the reference that I was starting with because sticking to the reference really made things a lot simpler for me and I knew that it would save a ton of time and keeping it simpler ultimately um, is what saved this animation. And with that, part two is done. So the big reveal at the end of the movie is actually that the whole Infinity Castle is a cube. And I thought that was really, really cool. And so I wanted to stick as close to the reference this time as possible. 
Though I thought it'd be really cool to break this up into three parts, the rising tower, the combination, and the full cube reveal. Uh, with this, we got to use Geonodes again, and because we had already constructed the rooms and modeled everything, it was really straightforward just to keep using those models. Then, because that technically was a stack that was rising up, you could just use that and duplicate it three times. From there, I was able to use a interesting fractal cube animation that Crossmind Studio made about two or three. And with that, we have all three parts, the room with Muzon, the tower with all the stacks and the interesting effects, and then the cube with the reveal all at the end. Finally, time for lighting and materials. And we had really set up our stuff. So, so from here, we've got three main components that we're going to be talking about, the materials, the lighting, and the overall fog for the animation itself. For materials, I used Blender Kit. We had already been using Blender Kit for some of the models, and so it just made sense to come in with the materials as well. And then I just changed up a few nodes for masks and things. Lighting was much harder though, because we are having this whole moving environment and everything, so it became really difficult to get everything perfect. We ultimately animated the lights. So the fog was also pretty difficult because anytime that we would switch the camera around or got to a certain angle, it would become really soupy. So we had to be careful with the fog. Finally, I rendered it out and did it a couple of passes. I think that uh, it's really good to do multiple passes for animations because you can see what you like and what you don't. And ultimately I ended up changing it quite a few times. <clears throat> And a special thanks to Fox Render Farm for helping us out with the animation, Rococo for the support and the add-on and sponsoring this video, Some Patreon supporters, thank you so much, definitely check that out, and this week's featured comment, thank you Nymphinks for your kind words. If you want your comment to be featured in my next video, comment down below, something you learned. Uh, thank you so much for watching my breakdown, without further ado, here is the Infinity Castle animation.